We all know that Helmut Marko loves to talk about how good Red Bull and Max Verstappen are. It's pretty much all he ever talks about, actually. And since Red Bull and Max both won a championship this year, he has taken every opportunity to preach their greatness. We get it, your team won. You want to tell everyone how great you are. Toto Wolf did it with Hamilton for years, it's nothing new. But Helmut has chosen to do it at the expense of Sergio Perez. So, what has the Austrian been saying about Perez this time? The Mexican Red Bull driver Sergio Perez has gained the nickname the Tire Whisperer over the past few years for a perceived ability to keep his tires in good shape, much longer than the rest of the grid. It has earned him plenty of surprising results in the past, such as his race victory at the 2020 Sakir Grand Prix, while driving for Racing Point. This year, though, that nickname has become a little less true. Helmut Marko thinks that it was actually his lack of tire management that cost him second place in the Drivers' Championship to Charles Leclerc. Tire wear on Perez's RB18 dictated the strategy the team deployed for him in the season finale in Abu Dhabi, forcing him to do two pit stops during the race. Like most of the field, he started on the medium compound, but had to stop for a set of hard tires on lap 16, and then did likewise again on lap 34. In contrast, Leclerc was able to make a one-stop strategy work, the Ferrari driver clinging on to second place in both the race and the championship from a fast-charging Perez. Unfortunately for Perez, his teammate Max Verstappen managed to make a one-stop strategy work and win the race, highlighting Sergio's poor tire management. Considering his nickname, you would expect Perez to be able to match the one-stop strategy of Verstappen, but early mistakes ruined his whole race. Marco was quick to point out it was Sergio's fault that Red Bull didn't finish with a 1-2 in the Drivers' Championship. Perez pushed too hard at the beginning of the first stint, Marco told the media. As a result, we had to bring him in earlier than planned. Of all the guys at the front, he was the first whose tires went. We were not forced into that early pit stop by Ferrari. No, we were forced into that early stop by Perez's own tire wear. Instead, according to the 79-year-old Austrian, it is now Verstappen who is the expert at making tires last far longer than they should. Max has gradually become a tire whisperer, added Marco. We give him a certain plan and he executes it optimally. In Abu Dhabi, for example, with Max, we had already assumed a one-stop. For the same considerations, we had gone for a two-stop with Perez, although that first stop of his still came earlier than we expected. It shouldn't be a surprise to hear Marco badmouthing one of his drivers. He's never pretended to be the nice guy in the paddock. But this isn't the first time this year he's had some pretty negative comments to say about Sergio Perez. In fact, after reading this most recent interview, we started thinking, does Helmut Marco actually like Perez as a driver? Back in November, he put Perez in his place regarding Red Bull's development. Helmut Marko said that Sergio Perez's claims that Red Bull's upgrades for the RB18 favoured his teammate Max Verstappen were nonsense. Although Perez was closer to his Dutch teammate at the beginning of this season than he was last year, when Verstappen's championship bid got going, he quickly left the Mexican driver in the dust. Perez reckoned that was partly because the upgrades Red Bull introduced for the RB18 suited Verstappen's style more than his own. He isn't the first driver to make the claim that his team is developing the car more for one driver over the other, and he won't be the last. In fact, he made the claim multiple times during the year after his ability to challenge Verstappen on track seemed to evaporate. After the Mexico City Grand Prix, he was asked about the team's development and whether it favoured Max more than him. I think probably so. There are times when some upgrades are more or less beneficial and come with the handling. We've seen that with a lot of other drivers and I think the way we developed the car was more in Max's direction. At the time, Marco wasted no time in saying that Sergio was just straight up lying. He said Red Bull's sole intention with their upgrades was to lower the car's weight. Of course that's nonsense, he told the media. The main problem was being overweight. We're still a little over it now. Telling the media that one of your drivers is talking nonsense is an odd choice. You're not exactly encouraging them to try their best, are you? He then went on to insult the Mexican driver's race pace. Asked whether he believes this year's success had more to do with the driver or more with the car, Marco said, It depends on both. You saw in the early stages of the season that Max was as fast as Perez in a car that didn't suit his driving style. If the car fits, it's half a second faster. What he's basically saying is that yes, the car did change throughout the season to match Max's driving style better and the car matching his driving style allowed him to gain half a second a lap of time over Sergio. He doesn't kill them with kindness, does he? Formula 1 drivers will know that their teammate might be faster than them, 
There's no way that Perez isn't aware of the fact that Max is a better driver than he is. But that doesn't stop them believing that they can beat them. Formula 1 drivers run on confidence and belief, so surely a good management choice would be to reinforce that belief. Well, not if you're Helmut Marko. According to him, part of his job at Red Bull has been to make Max Verstappen's teammates realize they're simply not as good as him. Since usurping Daniel Ricciardo as the Red Bull number one following his arrival at the Austrian energy drink Giants senior team in 2016, the Dutchman has put all of his subsequent teammates, Pierre Gasly, Alex Albon and now Sergio Perez in the shade. Perez has fared the best of that trio in that he's managed to win three races for the team, but that is chicken feed compared to Verstappen's 24 during the period they've been colleagues. Marco, the head of Red Bull's driver development program, knows even experienced racers like Perez will have the confidence to fancy their chances of beating Verstappen in the same team, but he has to remind them about the enormity of that task. At some stage, you have to recognize there is someone who is special, and it's just not possible to beat him," said Marco during an interview at the start of November. It's my job to make them understand that. Is that cruel? I don't think so. To have Max as a teammate is not a nice part of your career. Max is so special. He was trained in a very tough way by his father, but very successfully. For example, when he was less than 10 years old, they were in Italy and as soon as it started raining, all the other drivers went to the cafeteria for a coffee or a cake. Max had to stay out, sometimes with frozen fingers. That's why he's so good in the rain, he can adapt immediately. We all know the stories about Jos Verstappen and his awful treatment of his son, but Marco is right, it did make an incredible driver. Does that mean that Marco should tell his other drivers to not bother fighting because they'll never be good enough to beat Max? I definitely don't think so. If that is how he spoke to Daniel Ricciardo, it's no wonder the Australian left the team all those years ago. We shouldn't be surprised at Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon's struggles either. How is any driver supposed to perform to the best of their ability when someone who's meant to be mentoring them is destroying their confidence by saying they aren't good enough to beat their teammates? Marco added that Verstappen's teammates have resorted to trying to change things about their own driving or the setup of their car in a bid to tip the balance in their favor, but it has proven to be futile. They compare their car with his, added the 79-year-old Austrian. Do I have the same material? They think, how can I overcome him? They can't, so they try to change the setup on the car or adapt their driving style. Of course, you can't accept that you're simply not as good as him. How this man ever got a job in driver development is beyond me. Sure, the Red Bull system has brought through some great talent such as Daniel Ricciardo, Pierre Gasly and Alex Albon. But how good could they have been if Marco would have spoken about them the way he speaks about Max Verstappen? Albon always looked like he lacked the confidence necessary to be a really top driver while at Red Bull. Is Marco to blame? Perez is old enough and wide enough to just ignore him, but as a teenager coming into Formula 1, would it help you to have someone telling you you aren't good enough to beat your teammate? Or would it destroy your confidence and potentially your career? I know how I would feel. Let us know how you would feel in the comments down below. Until we see you next time, drive safe and bye for now.